Happy Friday. I thought it would be a good idea to have a bit of a grow along update. As we dip into autumn, the atmosphere is starting to get a lot more damp. Things are not drying out like they were. So we're gonna switch from watering underneath. I've now put my trays away and we will water overhead only. Just be gentle that you don't wash any of the seeds away. Just a gentle sprinkling, especially for those that need light for germination. Don't worry if you've watered your trays already today and you watered them from underneath because it's gonna be a lovely day tomorrow and it's quite mild at night. So they will soon dry out, but the next time you water, switch it to overhead watering only. Now the next thing is covering your ranunculus and anemone corms with compost. You would have seen on some of my videos that they're not covered. That's only so we can have a look, so we can see, so I can show you. If you've covered yours with compost, that's fine. That's absolutely the right thing to do. I've just left them slightly uncovered so we can peer at them together because you don't want to keep disturbing them. If you want to leave yours slightly uncovered so you can peer at them as well, that's fine. We'll just top up the compost as soon as the shoot starts to come above the soil surface and we don't need to be checking the corms anymore. Now today is October the 21st and for me here in Buckinghamshire, my light levels have now dropped to 10 hours and 18 minutes. So when the sun comes out, it's in and out today, definitely out tomorrow, I want you to check the location of your greenhouse and make sure that it still is getting enough light because as the light levels drop, the areas of your garden that were once in sun all day might not be getting the same light levels. So especially if you've got a zippy greenhouse, go out and check to make sure that they are getting light. A greenhouse in the shade is at risk of the seedlings getting damping off the seeds. So it's really, really important that they get enough light. So if you need to move it, then do so. This is in a good location. It will be nice and warm in there during the day. So make sure you open it up every morning and close it again every evening. I usually close mine about four o'clock because there's still a little bit of warmth in the air and that will trap it overnight. And that really helps raise the humidity inside your greenhouse and that aids seed germination having any problems with any of your seeds germinating there is a checklist in the handbook I'll show you that in a second which tells you the ideal temperature for every seed but if you're having any trouble at all with the seeds germinating you'll probably find it is because your greenhouse is not getting enough sun which is not warming the greenhouse up and warming the compost which means that the seed is sitting in cold damp compost and if it sits in cold damp compost for too long the seed will rot so if you've got any cells that are still empty after an interval, let's go and sow another seed and then just check your greenhouse is in the right location so that it gets warm enough to achieve germination. So for example, your sweet peas should not need germinating in the kitchen. They, mine are coming up without any effort whatsoever in the greenhouse. I'm literally just popping the seed in the pot and leaving them to get on with it. Here is the checklist and you can see the temperature, the ideal temperature range and whether or not they need light for germination is all listed. The seeds are all different and that's the reason why we've been staggering the sowing. So for example, we've only just sown the larkspur because it needs a cooler germinating temperature. It doesn't like to be germinated in the heat. And something like nigella, for example, likes a much warmer germination, which is why we sowed that earlier on in the season when the conditions were naturally much warmer. So if you've got any seeds that still need sowing, I would crack on with it this weekend while we've still got a glorious 10 hours and 18 minutes of daylight. We will hit rock bottom in December at seven hours and 44 minutes. Now that is too low for the seeds to germinate and thrive. They won't be able to photosynthesize properly. So you don't wanna be sowing in December and January. I literally won't sow anything from November really. The only thing you could get away with is a bit of larkspur because it needs cold stratification and then cold vernalization, which means it needs cold for the seed dormancy to be broken. And then it needs a period of cold growing conditions to uh, form strong roots. So that one you can kind of keep sowing until January, but everything else, just make sure that you get that done fairly quickly now we're not sowing the malope the scabious or the stocks until mid-february probably wondering why we're not sowing the stocks the scabious and the malope so let's go through each one the stocks 
grow incredibly quickly and they will need planting out in midwinter, which is no good whatsoever. If you keep them in their trays for too long, they will get pot bound and they will then become dwarf plants. They will not flower properly. They'll probably even flower in their seed tray. So that's no good. So we will sow those ones in February. Scabious are the same, they grow incredibly quickly and they thrive in hot, dry conditions, which is perfect for early summer, but not so good in January. And if you try and pinch them out, I've found that they usually die on you. So keep your seeds until February. Oak, I have found, really resents cold, damp conditions. So it makes sense to sow those along with the scabious in mid-February. Now the reason that these seeds are available in the autumn jump starter is the malope in particular needs to go in the fridge so that gives you plenty of time. We will have some more seeds available in the January seed shop along with the snapdragon so we'll be sowing the stocks, the malope, the scabies and the snapdragons in mid-February and you've ordered them in the autumn jump starter so you've got plenty of time. They're in your seed box, you know you're ready, you'll be raring to go by then and you've got plenty of time to pop your malope in the fridge ahead of sowing. Before I head off, one last thing. If you are using a small, lightweight greenhouse, for goodness sake, strap it or nail it to the wall because winter is coming, the storms are coming and it will blow over and it will take your seedlings with it. So make sure if you do nothing else this weekend, priority number one, is to secure your greenhouse. Make sure it's in a place that's got plenty of light and make sure it is secure.